The RSpec Explorer is an innovative and versatile teaching tool for analyzing light, spectrum, and color. The Explorer itself is a camera, and it can see a lot of cool things. Here's a typical application. Let's say you wanted to know the wavelength of light that each of these fruits reflects. So you look at them with the camera, usually with the room dimmed, and the screen on the right will tell us the intensity of the diffracted light. You want to line up your source so that it peaks with this yellow line. Then move these bars over the part of the image that you want to investigate. For example, this lemon. Aha! I see that the peak wavelength that reflects is right here. But how do I know that this is yellow? I press fill. Now the apple reflects mostly red light, and we can see its peak right over here. And the pepper reflects green, but this might be a little harder to read, so I like to click average 10. There, nice and stable. I suppose that the first lesson is that white light is made of color. Here, I am using my cell phone's flashlight feature, and it reveals that it's not an even distribution of colors, but dominant in violets and deficient in some of the blues and greens. Just by playing with it, your students will learn the wavelength range of visible light. The truth is, mixing two or more of any colors will result in a new color that fools the eye. Here, I'm mixing red and green light. The result looks yellow, but it does not fool the RSpec Explorer, which can easily tell that this yellow light is actually a mixture of red and green. Now I am mixing blue and red to make magenta, which looks pink. And of course, this white light is actually red, green, and blue. The next thing that you're going to want to analyze is the spectrum of ionized gases. This lesson belongs in any science class. This is ionized hydrogen gas. Here, we can see the red alpha line and the bright blue beta line. And I say we because everyone in your class can see this at the same time when you project it on a screen. The Balmer series is the collection of the visible lines of the hydrogen spectrum. But there's also the Lyman and the Passion series, which are in the infrared and the UV. The Balmer series involves transitions to the n equal 2 state, and these wavelengths can be calculated with the Rydberg formula, which you probably remember from high school chemistry or physics. On the other hand, the helium spectrum is quite different. You can always tell one element from another based on its spectrum. The distinguishing wavelength in helium is this bright yellow line at 589 nanometers. Helium was first discovered on the sun by observing these unique lines in its absorption spectrum. That's where it gets its name, helium from Helios. An experiment you might want to try with your students is to give them a mystery gas and have them identify it. For example, this is mercury, which has bright and well-defined atomic transitions in the blues and greens and a few in the red. There is actually a heavy amount of UV, which comes useful in fluorescent lamps. Now everyone's favorite is neon, which is highly saturated in the reds. And I don't have to tell you that because you've seen neon signs before. It's probably best to use the RSpec Explorer in conjunction with your other diffraction devices because it will help your students recognize the features that they are looking at. One awesome feature of this software is that it includes an elements library that you can use to verify the alignment or even identify unknown gases. For example, I always wanted to know what's inside of a plasma globe. Now with the RSpec Explorer, I can finally prove that it is helium and some other gases. I think it's argon. Now I'm burning some ordinary table salt, which makes a yellow light. Checking on the elements list verifies that this is sodium. The next thing you probably want to do is investigate the different types of light bulbs. First, here's the old-fashioned incandescent light bulb. Its spectrum is pretty much evenly distributed with a warm glow, as revealed by these many reds and yellows. On the other hand, this fluorescent twisty light bulb has quite a spiky spectrum with uneven color distributions. A closer analysis reveals that it is indeed mercury that is present in the bulb. 
There is also an added fluorescent element to make this one seem a little bit more natural, providing warm tones. Now I'm going to take a look at this plant light, which provides the light that plants need. In the spectrum, you can see two distinct peaks that correspond with the absorbencies of chlorophyll, showing that it does not actually absorb green. One of the most popular applications of the RSpec Explorer is that you can analyze the specific wavelengths of your lasers and diodes. For this purpose, the diode array is particularly helpful. You'll notice that the LEDs tend to have a significant spread. Their nominal or printed values usually refer to the peak brightnesses. On the other hand, laser light is highly monochromatic. Here, this blue laser seems to only have a specific wavelength of light, as does this green laser and this red laser. Speaking of wavelengths, my eye cannot tell the difference between a red diode laser and a helium neon laser, but the RSpec Explorer can. It reveals that neon red is shorter in wavelength than diode red. You can also prove that it's actually the neon in the helium neon laser that's doing the lasing. Even though the gas in the laser is mostly helium, neon is the secret ingredient and it's the one that emits the laser light. Aha! A perfect match. One thing I really wanted to do with the RSpec Explorer was investigate fluorescence, and there are many materials that you can use for this purpose. For example, tonic water glows sky blue when illuminated with violet light. That is because it contains quinine, an antimalarial. The RSpec reveals that the fluorescence is broad in the spectrum, which is often the case with fluorescent organic molecules. Another experiment I'm working on is the fluorescence of chlorophyll found in extra virgin olive oil. This fluoresces red under green light like a laser. While you've got your lasers out, be sure to shine a blue one on the phosphorescent vinyl sheet, which glows broadly with a peak in the green. By the way, there's a difference between fluorescence and phosphorescence. Fluorescence happens immediately, whereas phosphorescence is a delayed emission of stored energy. A powerful tool in the RSpec Explorer is its ability to determine the temperature of a glowing hot object. This is called the black body curve or the Planck curve. First adjust the settings to reduce the brightness, and then turn on a small incandescent light bulb, and you can verify its temperature by fitting a curve. I find that a yellow hot filament is about 3000 degrees Kelvin, whereas a white filament is a few thousand more. You can even compare these to the temperature of the surface of the sun, which is a G2V star. One thing you can also use the RSpec Explorer for is to teach diffraction. The camera is fitted with a small high quality diffraction grating and by measuring the distance that different wavelengths are diffracted you can try to figure out the grating's line density. This kind of reminds me of the 1998 AP physics question. Anyways, this device serves as an important application of the wave properties of light and the diffraction properties of waves. Most digital cameras can see infrared light and the Explorer is no exception. To do this experiment, first you need to get the room very dark and make sure that the infrared diode shows up very bright. Here you can even see the lens flare. Now you'll need to recalibrate the apparatus. I'm going to use my cell phone's flashlight again because it has such recognizable features in its spectrum. For example, we see there's a peak here at 450 nanometers and the light seems to end at about 650 nanometers. I rotate the camera and calibrate using these two points. I choose the linear approximation, pixel 450, pixel 650, and now I'm ready to go. Over here, you can see that the infrared light has a wavelength of around 900 nanometers. You can also see the lens flare showing up as the other peak. This is an important experiment because it reinforces the idea that the wavelength of infrared is longer than the wavelength of red light.
there are many experiments you can do with the intensity feature of the RSpec Explorer. I'm using this checkerboard pattern to demonstrate that the camera can tell you how bright the light is at various points along the screen. Now I'm using the RSpec in two polarizers to show that the intensity decreases with the relative angle as I cross them. This phenomenon is known as Malus' Law. Another experiment you can do is to show that the higher the concentration of a colored solution, the more it absorbs light. In this case, I'm using diluted Coca-Cola to demonstrate this. This experiment is known as Beer's Law. There's one more thing you should know about the RSpec Explorer. It can be used for astronomy in studying the sun, the sky, and the stars. You can use it to investigate the solar spectrum without a telescope by reflecting sunlight along the length of a pin. Another thing I've used it for is demonstrating that the blue sky is not monochromatic. In fact, all the colors of the rainbow are actually present in the blue sky, with the blue dominating, of course. So you can easily understand that it's really blue plus white, or unsaturated blue. If you do own a telescope, the RSpec includes a library of star calibrations that you can use to investigate unique spectra based on star type. The RSpec Explorer is a new opportunity for teachers to engage all of their students at once in the field of spectroscopy, and it provides us a chance as educators to be creative as we endeavor to succeed in the art of teaching science.